Understanding Aikido, Martial Context, Part 4, The Specifics of Aikido Technique. So, in the last video, the very first video we had, we talked about what martial context was, and basically that's the situation you're going to be in, martially speaking. Um, in the next video, we talked about uh, MMA and how MMA um, solved problems for that situation, one-on-one um, uh, -on -one unarmed, which is a situation we look at a lot. Um, but maybe didn't really answer all contexts, right? Because there's a lot of different contexts in martial arts. In the next video, we talked about uh, why, uh, what Aikido is looking at. And Aikido's context is specifically armed situation facing multiple attackers. Um, and how that's so different than uh, unarmed one-on-one -on -one that you really can't compare the two. Um, in this, I'm going to give some examples of why uh, the specifics of the technique are different and why that matters. So if we look at uh, a very effective unarmed one-on-one -on -one system like Western wrestling. There's no doubt that if you study Western wrestling uh, within the subdivision of grappling only, uh, in the context of one-on-one -on -one unarmed martial arts, you're going to be a very capable person. There's a lot to learn in that system that will make you very, very effective. Uh, one of the strong techniques you'll see in that uh, would be the double leg takedown. The double leg takedown is a magnificent takedown. works very good when you're highly trained in it. You will get most people on the ground very effectively and very quickly. Uh, the double leg takedown involves wrapping both your arms around the person you're attacking's legs and driving them back uh, so they fall down. Um, in an armed situation, this is a poor choice of technique. For example, if I had a knife in my hand and you came in and did a double leg takedown, it's still likely you're going to take me down, but when you take me down, you're going to get stabbed for it probably multiple times and probably fatally. So your takedown cost you significantly. If I have a longer reaching weapon, right, like a spear, a bow and arrow, a rifle, anything like this, you're probably never even going to get close enough to me to, to effect a double leg takedown. So a double leg takedown is not a very good choice in, in those arenas of looking at things. Um, so you can see where a technique like a double leg takedown, which is a strong, great technique to use in a one-on-one -on -one unarmed situation, isn't such a great technique when there's weapons involved. Uh, another criticism you see of Aikido is um, there's not a lot of clinch work in Aikido, right? So once you get into a clinch, um, Aikido doesn't have a lot of methods for dealing with it. And this is true, uh, we don't. And uh, you see Aikido people in clinch situations, they don't do well, right? So there's some videos of uh, uh, Aikidoka and, and Judoka getting together and doing Judo Rondori, and Aikido people don't do very well. Um, and this makes perfect sense because um, Aikido doesn't do any clinch work. Judo does a lot of clinch work. Judo's great at the clinch, Aikido's not good at the clinch. So why would you expect an Aikido person to, to do well in a clinch? Um, because of Aikido's interest in multiple attackers, you don't see clinch work. The reason's simple. It's not because clinch work's not important. It's because if we get into a clinch, um, we're not going to be able to get out before another person can come in and hurt us, right? So uh, when we lose the autonomy, right, and we, we get down into the clinch and start working on the nitty degrees of dealing with one person, which is good in a one-on-one -on -one match, it opens us up to be attacked by another person. Now, this doesn't mean that we cannot... Um, be clinched and that that wouldn't be bad for a multiple attacker situation. What it means is we spend a lot of time trying to avoid the clinch. So we don't have throws that come from a clinch situation. We have throws that come pre-clinch. We have escapes to keep us from getting into the clinch. So we don't have clinch escapes. Too late then. But we have pre-clinch escapes. We have escapes that are designed to get us out of the situation before the clinch even happens. Um, and it just being a foregone conclusion that if we're clinched, then it's, it's going to be too late, right? So it doesn't matter how good I am in the clinch. It takes too long from a clinch um, to, to deal with multiple attackers. So why spend a lot of my time working on the clinch when I'm going to always be facing multiple attackers? Um, another criticism you see of Aikido is why do Aikido spend so much time on wrist grabs? The wrist grabs seem like a very silly attack that doesn't happen that much. Um, it's not a very solid attack, so why do we spend a lot of time with that? Um, what I just said about the pre-clinch uh, applies to that. And also another important factor when we look at weapons applies to this. So if I have a weapon in my hand, if you don't control the weapon, I'm going to use the weapon on you. So for example, if you want to box with me and I have a knife, I'm going to use the knife on you. Likely, even if you're better at hitting me than I am at hitting you, every hit I make on you is going to be far more effective than the hits you make on me. Right? So my strikes with the weapon are going to be more powerful than your strikes unarmed. Um, so that doesn't mean that boxing is not valid. What it means is, uh, within our context, you, you need to control my weapon hand. If you can't control my weapon hand, you're not going to be very effective against me. 
So for me, if I have a weapon, you grabbing my wrist is a serious problem. The reason it's a serious problem is because now you control my weapon. Now every time you hit me, I can't hit you back because you're controlling my weapon hand. So you're going to hit me, I cannot use my weapon, I don't have an advantage anymore. So it's important to learn lots of ways to clear my weapon hand and use your desire to hold my weapon against you. To trap your mind with your desire to hold my weapon and use that against you. Um, so these are just a few specifics, and we'll cover more in other videos later. I just wanted to give you a few right now so you can kind of get an idea of why techniques for one system might not be effective for another because of our con contextual differences. So I hope this helped clarify martial context for you, why martial context is important to understanding Aikido. Uh, this is going to be the end of this series. Hopefully from here we're going to go on to make a, a lot of other videos explaining specifics and details uh, and help you get squared away and really help you to understand Aikido and what it's trying to do. I'm Christopher Fine. Thanks a lot for watching.